Price. Nice to meet you. Hello, my name is Lucy Bronze. My name is Zara Mosca. My name is Lauren James. My name is Amy Hafiz. I've played for England for 11 years. I'm really excited to make my debut this August in the World Games. I've been playing for England since the under 15s, all the way through to now. I first uh, is playing for England when I was 13 years old, so I've been playing for about 13 years now. 11 aside switched to futsal, which is five aside a couple of months ago now for the FA. Um, which has actually been a really, really good switch for us, for the team as well. I think it's the biggest honour to be able to represent England, uh, especially in big tournaments like World Cups, to pull on the shirt, to play the games. I think to have previously have won trophies for, the, for England as well uh, is one of the greatest honours that you can have as, a, as an athlete in general. Um, so to be able to say that I've represented England over a hundred times is, yeah, it's like a, a crazy dream that's come true for me. To be honest, to play for the country, you can't really put it into words what it feels like. Every time I put the shirt on, I'm not just representing myself, I'm representing the country, my family, my friends, everyone that supported me along the journey. Um, and every time I do go out there and play for England, I just give it my all and it's an absolute honour to play for England. My first time pulling on the England shirt was in under 15s against Germany. That was a big memory because obviously it was the first time I put the shirt on. And then, yeah, my, my debut for England women's senior team. It's absolutely amazing for me to be able to represent my country and also the disability sport that will be taking place in the World Games this August. It's the first World Games tournament that blind football has ever had for women and I'm really looking forward to be the first generation to represent that and what it might look like. You communicate in a completely different way that we communicate. Yeah. Um, you obviously rely a lot more on verbal, verbal communication, communication yeah. whereas we're like visual communication. Yeah. So we're at like polar opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. And L. L. And then should A E I O U to you. C. C. Y. Y. Oh, you have a sign name. So if someone will make up a sign name for you. So it's like whatever you're interested in, things like that. You'll She's just called L J. So you can just do L J. No. Yeah. So L J. What's J? L J. So you just call J. Yeah, okay. So I'm really excited to represent my country in the World Games this August. Um, it's the first World Games that blind football has had for women ever. So it's great to be able to represent not only my country, but also blind football and the growth of that within the women's sport. Off the back of such a successful tournament last year in the Euros, uh, being part of a team that finally won a tournament for England, uh, to be then heading into World Cup with that still kind of winning mentality and that feeling of what that felt like. This is the first time we get to go to a tournament, already knowing that feeling a little bit, already knowing that you know, we want to push to get right to the end. Uh, I think that's, for me, what's a little bit different to the previous tournaments I've been in, where you know, I'd never quite got my hands on a trophy at, at England, whereas to have already done it, to be heading to the next one uh, is just, yeah, it's just super exciting. Yeah, ever since I've been young, going to the World Cup has always been something I've wanted to do and worked hard towards. And yeah, I'm just grateful I've been given the opportunity to, to go. Um, we're preparing for Brazil this year in November. Um, so switching from 11 aside to futsal has kind of given us a platform now to go on and hopefully win the Worlds this year. I think the older I've got, the more I've uh, maybe understood and appreciated the journey of playing for England. I think more specifically in recent years when uh, the history of women's football has kind of in some respects kind of been dug up a little bit um, and to be able to be celebrated more with the popularity of the game uh, we've been able to find out more about the history about the people who've played before us you know over 50 years ago um, some of the first players to ever pull on the England shirt for the women's team and things like that and some of the stories and the things that they went through to help us on the journey that we're on now, I think those stories and those people help make you feel, I guess, appreciate it more and even more honour that you're not just representing yourself when you pull the shirt on, you're representing, you know, over, I guess, 200 women who have done it before you. Even off the pitch as well, not just on the pitch, the pride's off the pitch as well. And it's, it's about inspiring the next generation and every time I put the the, the shirt on, it's just about all the young kids that will come after me. I mean, it's entirely different on the pitch because even if you do have a little bit of hearing, that has to be taken away. And it's the same with our yeah. squad where the classification is B1, 2 and 3. So if you have a little bit of sight, you still have to put the eye shades on and totally rely on verbal communication. 
Yeah, but it's just interesting, like, how you guys communicate and, like, how we communicate. Like, we all use hands or eyes or yeah. you just have to know in your head what you're going to do. And yeah. you've got to trust. So yeah. we're massively on trust. So I've got to trust that, say that you was on my team, that you're going to make that run. Yeah. Whereas, like, for you guys, you can scream and tell them to make the run. Well, to be honest, it's really hard to describe how it feels to represent England. Um, every time I put the shirt on, I'm not just doing, not just representing myself, but I'm representing my family, everyone that supported me, and, and obviously the country as well. So um, it's an honour, to be honest. I think the advice that I've been given, and I think everybody always says it, is just to enjoy yourself. I think the, the two World Cups that I've previously played in have been two of the most enjoyable experiences of my entire career, whether at a club or a country level. Being in different countries, different continents, gives you just different experiences both on and off the pitch that otherwise you would never get to experience. I think we're very fortunate to be heading halfway around the world to Australia, uh, to a different culture, to kind of just embrace each moment, whether it's on the pitch playing against teams and players you've never faced, to different crowds, to different locations. You know, these are memories that'll last a lifetime. My first goal for England, it was an amazing feeling, to be fair. To score for your country is always a good feeling and a proud moment, and to top it off of a goal, it was even more special. <laughs> I feel so grateful right Nothing now. Nothing to see you here. <laughs> <laughs> see you later.